Hey, this is Christina Waters. Hope you're well. In this video, I'm going to talk in more detail how to freehand on a cake, as well as what are those flowers uh, I use to paint on my cake, where they come from, and also how to make your flowers, painted flowers, appear more 3D. Stay tuned. Those who've seen my other videos on uh, painted cakes would already know that because we're talking cakes here, I am not using a pencil to draw a pattern on a cake, neither do I do any tracing. So I do a freehand and uh, to help me with that, I draw a shape of the flower and the composition. I do a little sketch on a piece of paper first. And the theory here is that practice makes perfect. However, it's not always the case. Uh, for example, here, but, uh, when I did my little sketch for this peony, it worked out really well on the paper to my liking. I thought, hey, I've got, um, I got it nailed, it's brilliant. However, when, when I started putting it on the cake itself, I've realized that it was not going to be as easy as that. So you could see that I do loads of uh, washing off and removing lines and adjusting throughout the cake. I've just found that it's pretty much a potluck. Sometimes uh, the pattern just goes on it and it's absolutely fine. And sometimes you have to do some editing on a cake. So I suggest you use very light uh, light uh, lines and a thin brush to, to do that. So the, the lines you don't like are easy to remove. Uh, obviously it depends on the initial um, color of your flower, etc because if it's darker then you can afford darker lines or sometimes you could even do different color lines depending on the outline of your of your picture and while we're in the subject i just want to mention one thing brighter colors are a lot easier to do while you're still a beginner particularly because uh, the flowers in brighter colors are just more expressive they more readily uh, tell you what they're all about so perhaps uh, at least initially stick to brighter colors or if you want to use lighter color for your flowers perhaps uh, go for slightly more abstract less detailed uh, version So, how do you make your flower more three-dimensional, more lifelike? When we look at an object, not all of it at the same time uh, draws equal amount of our attention. Instead, we seem to be drawn to one particular part of it more than to the rest of it. So, in my flowers, I try to make part of a flower, usually the front, in more detail. So, that way, it kind of mimics that tendency. If you go on Instagram or Pinterest, you'd see loads of uh, pictures of flowers taken with this uh, lens that allows for the foreground to be in great focus and then soft focus in the background so that kind of would give you an idea uh, of uh, how to play with a 3d effect another thing is colors so uh, colors really really help to add a 3d uh, pay attention to things like where does the sun come from it's not just a case of plonking loads of bright colors at the front and hope for the best there's more to it and i'm going to try to go into more details uh, about this particular aspect in my further demos but yeah it's just a little thing for you for now to have a think about
Finally, here and particularly on Instagram, I get asked a lot what pictures do I copy for my painted cakes, what artists do I copy, so I thought I'd say a couple of words about it. I really like to uh, have a bit of a contemporary take on botanical painting on cakes. Painting on fondant is totally different to painting on paper, it would seem, just uh, looking at the techniques. But uh, I am uh, I like a couple of artists who I'm going to link below and I like their work. Uh, I don't have an ability or a wish to copy them, although I draw a lot of inspiration on uh, some of their color schemes or uh, some of their takes on composition. So, uh, but generally I do try to copy real flowers. So have a look at the links below and hopefully that would give you more of an idea. And another good place to look at is uh, my Instagram and particularly my Pinterest, my watercolor board there. So hopefully that helps. And with that, I think we're done for now. If you found this demo useful, please consider subscribing. This is Christina Wallace here and I will see you next Thursday again with a tutorial on how to make a sugar flower. Have a lovely rest of the week.